last remaining territory on the planet that could have such a designation is Antarctica. If you picture Antarctica today, you see a continent of howling winds and endless ice. It appears as a lifeless expanse locked in an eternal winter, a place where survival is a daily battle. But deep beneath the seafloor, a secret hidden for 90 million years tells a completely different story. Scientists drilling into the ocean bed discovered something no one expected, ancient roots, pollen, and fossilized cells frozen in time. We have different kinds of fossils that we're finding here, some, some sea urchin materials, some fossil wood. This was proof that the icy wilderness was once a temperate rainforest. The discovery forces us to rethink our planet's past, raising a compelling question. This has undertaken a monumental trek to unlock the Earth's climate history. If a continent can transform from a jungle to an ice sheet, what other secrets lie buried, waiting to be found? So, how did scientists find definitive proof that Antarctica was once covered in forests and rivers? The story begins in 2017 aboard the German research vessel the Polarstern. An international team of scientists sailed into the icy Weddell Sea with a specific mission to drill into the sea floor and retrieve sediment cores that could reveal Earth's ancient climate history. They expected to find layers of mud, but what they uncovered was far stranger. Nearly 90 feet below the ocean floor, their drill hit a layer that seemed entirely out of place. The sediment was darker and denser, like a page in Earth's diary that didn't belong. When the core sample was brought on deck, the team was stunned. It didn't look like typical marine sediment. Instead, it looked like soil that had formed on land. As they began to analyze the sample, the real shock came. Under the microscope, they found a delicate network of fossilized roots and countless grains of ancient pollen. Imagine finding evidence of a thriving forest buried beneath the very ice cap we consider barren. These were not just random traces. The fossils pointed to a complete ecosystem that flourished where nothing grows today. The mood on board shifted from routine research to awe. They were holding tangible proof that the frozen desert of Antarctica was a jungle millions of years ago. It was a moment that challenged everything they thought they knew about Earth's history. With the initial shock wearing off, the real detective work began. The core samples were sent to labs where every grain of sediment was treated like a clue from a crime scene. Using x-rays and CT scans, researchers could peer inside the sample without physically breaking it apart. What these scans revealed was astonishing. They saw not just smudges, but intricate networks of fossilized roots, branching out just as they would in modern soil. Microscopes revealed perfectly preserved pollen and spores, detailed enough to see their individual cell structures. This confirmed it wasn't ocean muck. It was ancient land soil, locked away for tens of millions of years. The layer's dark coloration was another key indicator. It stood in stark contrast to the lighter marine sediments above and below it, telling the scientists they were looking at a completely different environment from a different time. Johann Klages, one of the lead scientists on the expedition, described it as finding a hidden chapter in Earth's history. But what kind of landscape could have created soil like this? By identifying the types of pollen and plant remains, the team began to piece together the answer. This wasn't a sparse tundra or a dry woodland. The evidence pointed to a rich, swampy environment, similar to the temperate rainforests found in New Zealand today. The soil itself suggested a wet, boggy world where life thrived. The implications were staggering. If this soil was real, then Antarctica was once warm enough to support dense forests. The coldest place on Earth had once been a lush, green paradise. 90 million years ago, Antarctica was a warm, swampy rainforest, similar to modern-day New Zealand. Scientists know this from a seafloor core from the Weddell Sea margin of Antarctica, which contained fossilized plants and spores. A major question was how the forest survived four months of darkness during the polar winter. The climate was so mild that the plants likely adapted by entering a state of hibernation until the sun returned. While no animal fossils were found in the sample, dinosaurs are known to have lived in these forests. This ancient green world, completely different from the ice we see today, shows that a powerful greenhouse effect once made the Earth's climate much warmer. To understand how Antarctica could have been a jungle, we need to go back 90 million years to the mid-Cretaceous period. 
This was one of the warmest eras in the last 140 million years. Global temperatures were so high that there were no permanent ice caps on Earth, not even at the poles. The primary cause for this extreme heat was carbon dioxide. Today, atmospheric CO2 levels are just over 400 parts per million ppm. During the mid-Cretaceous, climate models suggest those levels were closer to 1,000 ppm. This immense concentration of greenhouse gas wrapped the planet in a thick, heat-trapping blanket. Remarkably, this is what kept Antarctica temperate, even with four months of annual darkness. The high CO2 levels locked in enough heat to prevent the continent from freezing over. Rainforests were able to survive in the dim, humid conditions, much like plants on the floor of a dense, modern jungle that receive very little light. This ancient Antarctica was perfectly adapted to its world. Data from around the globe supports this conclusion. Ice cores, marine sediments, and fossils all tell the same story of a hotter, wetter, more tropical Earth. What made the Antarctic find so revolutionary was that it proved this extreme climate reached all the way to the South Pole. It reshaped our vision of Earth's ancient past, revealing how the Antarctic once mirrored climates far beyond imagination. Another contributing factor was the arrangement of the continents. Antarctica was not yet isolated. It was still connected to South America and Australia. This allowed warm ocean currents to flow towards the pole, preventing the buildup of ice. But this discovery of a green past also raises questions about our future. If high CO2 levels once turned Antarctica into a jungle, what does it mean that our levels are rising so rapidly today? If Antarctica was a jungle, how did it freeze? The change was dramatic and happened for three main reasons. First, the continents drifted apart. As South America and Australia moved away, Antarctica became isolated. A powerful, cold ocean current formed around it, acting like a barrier that blocked warm water from reaching its shores. Second, carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere dropped. With less of this heat-trapping gas, the entire planet cooled down, and Antarctica lost the warmth that had kept its forests alive. Finally, a feedback loop began. As the continent cooled, ice started to form. The bright white ice reflected sunlight back into space, which made the planet even colder. This caused more ice to form even faster. Over geologic time, this sequence transformed the lush rainforest into the frozen continent we see today, burying its green past under miles of ice. For centuries, Antarctica was depicted on maps as a blank white space, an empty, frozen void at the bottom of the world. It was this Antarctic emptiness that stirred imagination, turning a frozen void into humanity's last great frontier. The discovery of fossilized roots and spores completely shattered that story. Antarctica was no longer just a frozen continent. It was a world of extremes, capable of shifting from a lush rainforest to an icy wasteland. This discovery fundamentally changed our understanding of Earth's history. It forced a complete rewrite of the planet's timeline, showing that Earth is not a static system. It can swing dramatically between different climate states. The ground beneath our feet is far less predictable than we might imagine. The power of this finding lies in the proof. For decades, there had been speculation about Antarctica's past, including fringe theories of lost civilizations. But now, scientists had physical evidence, preserved roots, distinct soil layers, and plant cells intact after 90 million years. They brought proof, and with it, the conversation shifted from possibility to reality. This reality carries a significant lesson. If Antarctica could undergo such a complete transformation, the rest of our planet's history might hold similar surprises. It reminds us that Earth's story is stranger and more dynamic than we ever thought. Long before scientists found physical proof, some people pointed to an old map as evidence that Antarctica was once ice-free. The Piri race map, drawn by an Ottoman admiral in 1513, has been central to these claims for years. It shows the coasts of Africa and South America. But at the very bottom, a strange landmass curves eastward. Proponents of fringe theories claim this is an accurate depiction of Antarctica's coastline without its ice sheet. If true, this would mean someone mapped the southern continent long before its official discovery in the 19th century. The problem, however, is that humans did not exist 90 million years ago when Antarctica was last green. So what does the map actually show? 
Mainstream historians offer a simpler explanation. Piri Reis himself noted that he compiled his chart from around 20 different source maps. Early cartographers often relied on guesswork and legend to fill in unknown parts of the world. The mysterious southern landmass was likely an artistic interpretation of Terra Australis, a mythical continent believed to exist to balance the land in the northern hemisphere. Furthermore, if you digitally unbend the distorted coastline on the map, it more closely matches the coast of South America, not Antarctica. While writers and theorists have used the map to suggest the existence of a lost, advanced civilization, scholars argue it's a combination of known geography, estimation, and coincidence. And this highlights the critical difference between speculation and science. An old map is an interesting historical artifact, but it isn't proof. Fossilized roots and pollen, pulled from deep beneath the Antarctic seafloor, now that's proof. The Piri race map can fuel debate, but the sediment core from the Polar Stern expedition ends it. It is easy to speculate. Throughout history, we have filled the gaps in our knowledge with myths, legends, and theories. Science, however, demands proof, something tangible that can be tested, verified, and re-examined. That is why the discovery of the Antarctic rainforest is so significant. It wasn't a legend or a drawing on an old map. It was solid, physical evidence that told an undeniable story. When the researchers brought that sediment core on deck, they weren't just proposing another theory. They were confirming a fact. This is how scientific understanding moves forward. Not through stories, but through verifiable evidence. This is not to say captivating stories aren't influential. Ideas about ancient maps and forgotten knowledge are intriguing. But without hard evidence, they remain just stories. The samples drilled from the Antarctic seafloor, in contrast, transform imagination into fact. Proof changes the conversation. Without it, we are left with endless debate. With it, we can measure, date, and reconstruct an entire lost world. What once sounded impossible becomes an official part of Earth's history. That is the power of proof. It shows us that our understanding of the past is fragile and can be overturned by a single groundbreaking discovery. Standing on the edge of Antarctica today feels like being at the end of the world. It is a realm of ice and wind, a silent, frozen landscape. Yet hidden beneath it lies a history that changes everything. The soil samples from the seafloor prove that this desolate continent was once a thriving jungle. It's a powerful reminder that our planet is full of surprises, capable of shifting between extremes. We tend to think of history as fixed, but a discovery like this shows it can always be rewritten. And perhaps that is the most compelling thought of all. If Antarctica could hide a rainforest for 90 million years, what other secrets still lie buried deep beneath the ice?